What is the difference between dating Western women versus foreign women? Right now, there's a huge phenomenon known as the Passport Bros movement. Passport Bros are defined as men who have chosen to seek out foreign women, typically from other countries, for relationships. They believe that Western women have been influenced by cultural and societal pressures to behave in a certain way, and that by seeking out foreign women, they can find a more authentic, fulfilling, and harmonious relationship. In this video, I'm going to explain why this movement is so popular, and also give some of my experience having dated in America and now in in Thailand. You could say I'm a successful passport bro since I've found a very successful relationship here. So I want to share the immediate differences between dating here in Thailand versus dating in America. And they are very huge differences. Now, before I get into it, I just want to emphasize that obviously everybody is different. I'm not trying to say that all Western women are bad. It obviously depends who you meet. Biggest differences are the modernization, the masculinization, the radical feminism, and the cultural differences between Western women and non-Western women or like foreign women. And these differences are the exact reason why the Passport Bros movement is so popular. A lot of guys are having a lot of success and are finding themselves very happy, but also being heavily criticized and judged and shamed for doing so, ironically, by Western women. A lot of these Passport Bros are exploiting a power imbalance economically. Y'all are taking advantage of these women. It's easier for these men to go overseas, get one of these um, victims. Exploit younger, more impressionable, less educated or uneducated um, girls living in poverty. They interpret it as some third world country where all of its women are uneducated and poor and need some man to essentially save them and the man is going to be like oppressing them and exploiting them. That's unbelievably racist to think that all of its women cannot think for themselves and they can't possibly imagine that these kinds of relationships are based on actual genuine love. So I have nothing but support for the Passport Bros movement. Let's discuss modernization first. It's basically a movement where a lot of women are rejecting the traditional stereotypical gender roles and traditional values and customs such as marriage, such as monogamy, such as having children, and other feminine characteristics. They're basically attempting to eliminate every single stereotypical gender role. Now, I'm not here to criticize this movement as a whole, because in some ways, I think it's just natural adaptation of society where women want to focus on work and make a lot of money and maybe other masculine kind of attributes. I think a nice blend of like modernism and, you know, femininity is healthy, but I think where it's become quite toxic is that a lot of these women in this movement have become extremely entitled, hypocritical, aggressive, and just plain out disrespectful to all of the men and women out here that prefer traditional roles and values. Nowadays in the West, if a girl says she wants a guy who is six feet tall, makes six figures, and a gentleman, then she's empowered because she has preferences, right? Those are simply preferences. And obviously everybody should have some preferences. I think preferences are a good thing. But where it's become hypocritical is if a man says he wants a woman that is skinny, feminine and is ladylike and modest, then all of a sudden he's labeled as a misogynist and someone who's trying to objectify the woman. They throw around this misogynist term so loosely to like every single man that might have the slightest of a critique of a modern day woman. The guy cannot simply have preferences without being criticized heavily by these modern day women. If the modernization movement is for equality, then it should be for both men and women. And, and the term misogyny is just blown out of proportion. While in reality, misandry is actually never talking about. Misandry is basically the hatred of men. And it's literally everywhere. Like, What sort of oppression do you face? Every man is an attacker for me. I have to leave the house always in fear. But don't you think viewing like an entire group and assuming they're attackers, that's kind of a dangerous worldview? That's the world that women live in. Your mother, you have a mother, right? Have you ever asked them, have they been attacked, assaulted? Right? Yes, yes. Okay, and what would they say to you? Exactly. But do you think that's honestly true or do you think that that's what they told you? You do realize that not all, all men are racist, right? Do we need men? No. Do we need men? Honestly, no. Do we need men? No. Why? They suck. <laughs> and it's interesting because a lot of these modern day women actually prefer guys who have traditional masculine attributes such as strength, such as protection, such as security, and other traditional values and characteristics. Yet at the same time, these modern women don't want to do traditional things. They will say that a guy has to do these things because these are his duties and they're expected of him. I think the question is more so how traditional are you? I am not super traditional. You have like a, these high standards for your man, right? Mm -hmm. What are you prepared to offer him? Well, myself. 
A lot of men experience these type of women that are extremely entitled, aggressive, overly masculine, rude, and pretty much reject all tradition. And these women don't just attack men, they also attack women. For example, I saw a video of a girl cooking for his men extremely good dinners and a lot of thought went into that food. And a lot of the comments were women just shaming her for doing that, seeing it as like she's being too subservient or being too submissive to her man or something and seeing it as a bad way. So how this all relates is that a lot of men and women actually prefer tradition and we like these gender roles and we like the dynamic of masculinity and femininity in relationships. We see it as healthy and we see it as natural. A lot of men such as myself wants to be strong, wants to be masculine, want to be the provider, wants to take care of a woman and in return be taken care of and appreciated and not have this like power struggle dynamic women that are very masculine are often in a relationship with a naturally masculine guy so there's like these constant friction and there's not like a nice yin and yang relationship between the feminine and the masculine in my perspective i think that's the most healthiest relationship when two distinct masculine and feminine frames can synergistically have a very natural flow but people again will misinterpret this as like oh a man is trying to control the woman, the man is trying to oppress her, like some narrative like that, and it's completely ridiculous. So a lot of these men are just fed up with the women that are very rude, aggressive, overly masculine, disrespectful, entitled, hypocritical, promiscuous, a lot of these modern day attributes of a lot of women nowadays. If you're a woman watching this right now and you don't identify with these characteristics, just know that I am not talking about you, okay? So I'm not trying to generalize every single woman from the West, obviously. These men just want to meet a traditional feminine woman. It's funny because all of these things I'm saying right now are kind of controversial in today's world but just a few years ago this was the norm most people have thought like this but nowadays it's spun and it's particularly in the west that this is happening to the mainstream narrative right now is just trying to basically condition everyone in the west to think in this particular way in other countries their people have not adapted to this western kind of culture and this western ideology and that's exactly what it is. It's ideology, it's indoctrination, and it's political. It has everything to do with the media, the schools, the teachers, the celebrities, the politics. These are all things that have conditioned a lot of Western people to think like this. Fast forward to now in Bangkok, Thailand, I feel like the differences are huge. It's so refreshing to know that the women here have not been indoctrinated and have not been conditioned to think like a lot of these Western women do. In general, the women you'll meet here are very kind, very feminine, very energizing and playful and easygoing. And I think it's a lot more authentic from the get-go when you meet them. Now, in general, I don't think that they're as picky as a lot of Western women are. I feel like a lot of women here are authentic and they go off of your energy and they go off of like who you are to all the men watching this you'll know exactly what i'm about to say in america you'll meet a lot of women that will say you have to be six feet tall you cannot be a trump supporter you have to be double vaxxed and they'll have like all these qualifications and these red flags and the women not just the women but the people in the west are very quick to judge someone into these labels so for example if you support trump you're a racist if you like andrew tate you're a misogynist so there's no critical thinking involved. It's like, oh, you like that guy? You're immediately this label. You're immediately this ideological label. And in the West, I feel like a lot of games are being played, like such as like, oh, I don't want to text her back or text him back too quickly because I'll seem desperate. Oh, I want to seem a little bit distant and mysterious and aloof. That way it will intrigue her interest. And a lot of times women will shit test a man and slightly insult him or disrespect him in order to see how the man will react or respond. For example, they can make a disrespectful comment just to see how the guy would react. And if the guy reacts emotionally, then he essentially fails the test. So it's like a lot of these games, a lot of these psychological things are being played in like the Western dating market with a lot of these type of women. Whereas in Thailand, I have not really seen that. And I really want to emphasize that the women here I've met are very feminine. And what I mean by feminine is that they're like very joyful. They're very cheerful. They're very like happy and friendly and welcoming and nourishing and submissive. And they'll also do traditional things like cook for you or clean for you without even you asking them. Like if you were to date a girl for the first time in America and expect her to like clean or cook for you that would be absurd that would almost be cringy to a lot of women and they would react like why would i ever clean your room we're not even married like why would i ever do something like that whereas in thailand like you can meet a girl on the first date or second date and they'll literally just start cleaning your room i had no expectation of them doing that they did that willingly out of an expression of affection a lot of these modern western women will interpret that as like 
why, why the hell would I ever clean for you when we're not even married, when we don't even live in the same house? Are you some sort of master? Why would I ever do that? And they would cringe at the idea of that. When the women here who have done that don't see it like that. They see it like, oh, I really like this guy. I think he'd be happier if I made him a very tasty meal. Or like, oh, the house is a little bit dirty. I want to help him out because he seems like he works a lot. Like, those are the kinds of thought processes. That's it. But Western women will misinterpret that as in like, oh, I expected her to do it because she's a woman and she has to go back to the kitchen, like, like these insane judgments. And I'm not saying I expect this to happen, but it's just like, it feels so good. Like, it feels like, wow, this is so refreshing. A lot of men here feel like that. Like they meet an extremely feminine woman and they don't have the urge to like control her and to like oppress her like a lot of Western women might think. They have the exact opposite reaction. They have the masculine urge to protect them and to provide for them and just literally do everything to take care of them. So it just shows the huge differences between Western thinking and non-Western thinking. Another interesting difference is that in the West, uh, the time period of becoming in a relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend, is a lot longer than in Thailand. For example, you'll meet a girl here in Thailand and within one to two dates, within maybe one to two weeks, they'll already want to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. Even in Korea, I've heard that men and women, they don't kiss before they establish the fact that they're a boyfriend and girlfriend and committed. So the culture is, it's kind of very fast. I'm not really here to say if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, I think that it's a good thing to have a little bit of time to like really get to know the person. And in the West, it's very common for you to date multiple partners at the same time and develop a roster of highly qualified men or women that you're seeing all at the same time. You could be seeing a girl and then after a couple dates, you'll just all of a sudden just be displaced off their roster and they'll essentially ghost you. So those are the general differences that comes to mind between Western women and foreign women. But I would be biased if I didn't mention the negative aspects of a lot of Thai women here. I guess some of the negative characteristics might be that they're needy or possessive. They'll be very clingy when it's like the first or second date meeting them. Whereas in the West, I feel like girls would give you a little bit more distance. Like a lot of them will literally want to move in with you after the first or second date. They'll like pack their bags and essentially want to move in with you. And for for any older foreigners living here in Thailand watching this video, you will know that a lot of older men experience a Thai wife getting married for a couple years and then her completely changing and steals all of his assets and leaves him with nothing. Those are generally the only things I can think of. Overall, Thailand is probably one of the best cities for dating for men, also because of the ratio of men to women. There's a lot more women here than men. I have been absolutely happier here in living in Thailand than I have been in America. I have dated around in Thailand and my mindset was always Always like I want to be single because I want to focus on my work and because I don't really know how long I'm gonna stay in Thailand but eventually I met my current girlfriend who you often see in this channel I was never looking for her you know I was never looking for a relationship I remember after our first date ever since that day I was like man this girl is really special the rest has been history it's been about a year and a half since we've been in a relationship and I don't really see myself leaving Thailand and I don't really want to live Thailand so yeah I guess I am a successful passport bro so that's pretty much my story I think a lot of foreigners living here in Thailand can also relate to my story. Oftentimes they come to Thailand and they meet a wonderful girl who they've never met like before and they essentially want to settle here and live in Thailand forever. That's exactly what happened to me. So that's pretty much all I have to say and if I ever get cancelled from a video it's going to be this video but that's the risk nowadays for free speech and having an opinion. Follow me on Instagram at I'm Paul Lee and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.